Hi, my name is Roland and welcome to my Vectrex Rolly Show. Today I would like to show you a very interesting vintage electronic toy. This is an early Philips Pong console from 1975. And before you think now, ah, oh, this is just another system from the 1970s, I can already tell you that this system here is very special and very interesting to see. And there are not many videos or even photos out there showing that system in action. I will put this video also in my Obscure Game Systems playlist on YouTube. There will be two parts, otherwise this video would get too long. In this first part I will show you the system and in the second part I will focus on the games. I guess most of you already know what a Pong console is. It is a primitive TV game where players and objects consist of very basic lines, dots or blocks. And I also guess some of you already heard about the Magnavox Odyssey, which was the first commercial home video game console and came out in 1972. And I will link to the Wikipedia page if you want to read more about that. I mentioned that system now as my Philips console here is a bit similar to the old Odyssey, not gameplay wise, but from a technology point of view. There are videos about the Magnavox Odyssey on YouTube, so you can also look for that and usually I always link to interesting videos also on other channels. The problem is I didn't find any good video about that interesting system so far. There is one from the Angry Video Game Nerd, a character played by James Rolfe, which most of you will know I guess and there are a few from his imitators and they all focus more on the entertainment value or extensive green screen effects and predictable humor for a younger target group and it is fine if you like such kind of videos I also watch them myself but often you don't really learn much about the system as such which is a bit sad then there are people that focus more on the console, but then often video quality is extremely bad, camera work is bad and there is no light, so you don't really see much. I like old consoles and it is a shame that there are 10 million videos about the Nintendo Entertainment System on YouTube, but not many good videos about systems from the pre-Atari era. Anyway, there is not enough time to tell you the whole history of Pong systems here, all we need to know for now is that both this ES2201 from 1975 and also the Magnavox Odyssey from 1972 are completely built without using a central processing unit, a so-called CPU, so there is no software whatsoever running on those first generation Pong consoles. The whole game logic is completely done in hardware. Both systems used game cartridges, even they work differently, but I will come to that later. First I would like to talk more about game cartridges in general, as this is interesting to know. What we see here now is a German PAL version of the Fairchild Channel F system and I will show you more about that in a future video and the reason I mentioned the Channel F which came on the market in 1976 is because it was the first programmable ROM cartridge based video game console and the first console that used a microprocessor. This is a game cartridge for the Channel F system, which contains software on ROM, like it was the case with later systems from Atari or Nintendo. But even before the Channel F there were game cartridges available, but those didn't contain any software at all. The Magnavox Odyssey had only electrical jumpers in the cartridges, according to what people said on YouTube, but the game cartridges for the Philips ES2201 are very special and if you want you could argue now that this was one of the first systems with real game cartridges, depending on how you would define real game cartridges. Those Philips cartridges did contain a few discrete components like capacitors, resistors, diodes and transistors transistors, so neither just electrical jumper connections like on the Odyssey system, nor game data on ROM like on the Channel F and later game consoles. So if you would like to make a copy of such a Pong game, you would need to copy the PCB of the cartridge and put components with the same values on it. 
What is also quite unique is that the controllers plug directly into the game cartridge and not the game console. As far as I know, only 5 game cartridges ever came out for that system. Only to give you the complete picture, here I show you now also a game cartridge for the Redofin Telesports 3 Pong console as one example for later generation or last generation Pong systems. Within those kind of interchangeable Pong cartridges, there were dedicated integrated circuits built in and the systems were called Pong in a chip systems. So basically the core component of the whole system was in the cartridge and not in the main unit and I might show you the Redofin Telesport 3 system in action in a future video. Our ES2201 system is now from a very early generation of Pong consoles, so there is no such dedicated integrated Pong chip built in. So one last look at the box, I really like it as the whole box design reminds me of one of those electronic experiment kits sold by Philips and I had such a kit myself in the 1980s and you could learn a lot about electronics and build all kinds of interesting devices with it like a working AM radio for example. All the text on the box is in German language, but it also came in different other languages. That system was released in several European countries. Look at this photo, two happy guys, an older guy and a younger guy, playing a super modern video game of the future on a great looking 1970s TV. Welcome to the world of advertising, we all should think now that this is a father and his son, but who really knows if this is true? I mean, couldn't it be also an absolutely mental serial killer that lives in his basement, has his own YouTube channel and forces kids from his neighborhood to play video games with him and he also forces them to smile? Seriously, I have no clue why I said that now. By the way, if you hear some strange noises in the background, that is just our heating system here in our basement. <clears throat> and we also don't have a secret graveyard in our garden, just to make that clear. Anyway, let's have a look inside the coffin box. I mean inside the box, so let's open it up now. With the main unit you also got two controllers that are both connected to one single controller plug and there was already one game cartridge included. Let's have a quick look at the manual that came with the system. The main unit does not have any power switch, so you always have to disconnect the controllers after gameplay. The unit is powered using a 9 volt battery. There is a slot for the game cartridges, the games are all in black and white without any sound output. There is no score counter built in, so you have to do that manually with the two sliders on top of the system. In case you think now that it was not possible to do sound and automatic score counters with such old technology, well it was, but I guess they just wanted to keep complexity and production costs low. There are two red knobs, the right one which is labeled Handicap is for difficulty settings and the left one is for the frequency settings for the RF output. It is labeled with the German word Kanal which means channel and you can choose between the VHF channels 2, 3 or 4. You connect the game system with your TV using 75 ohm coaxial cable and that cable is soldered directly to the main unit. Overall I get the feeling that everything was designed to be as cost effective as possible, so this here is clearly marketed more as an electronic toy than a high quality consumer product. Here we see now the controllers, so you get two sliders with potentiometers built in and one tiny red button on each controller, so you could only steer into two directions for each controller. Those controllers still seem to work fine after all the years. On later Philips Pong systems, like for example the so-called Las Vegas series, you got real joysticks instead. Here we see now a game cartridge that came with the system, as I said the controller port was on the game cartridges. 
I own four of the five games released, so if one of my viewers has the game Pelota for sale, which is called Trainingswand in German and is basically a one-player squash-like game, please let me know as I would like to buy that from you then. The Pack-In game is the two-player game Badminton in German language, it is called Federball, so they neither call the game Tennis nor Pong. We will only have a quick look at the game, as I said there will be a second video where we will have a closer look at the game, so please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you have not bound it already. The system is set up and ready to go. When the game cartridge and also the controllers are plugged in, the system is switched on and we are already draining the battery. There is no power switch and no control light. The manual tells us that a fresh battery should last for about 50 hours of gameplay and there is no connector for a power supply. This is the RF out plug of the Pong console using a 75 ohm coaxial cable, which was and still is common in Central Europe. This game system was not released outside Europe as far as I know. In the 1970s and early 1980s people still had different antenna connectors on their TVs with separate antenna inputs for VHF and UHF frequency ranges and then you would need a splitter device like this one here. So what kind of TV should we use now to test the system? Well of course we need a receiver that still can handle European analog TV signals. Sound standard is not that important as the system does not generate sound anyway. The video signal is in black and white, so a very old black and white TV where you can select channels manually would be the preferred solution. With more modern TVs that can do automatic search, you often don't find the RF signals generated by such old Pong systems and it is also helpful if you can control horizontal and vertical sync. So long story short, with an old or even ancient TV that was built before mid 1980s, it will be much easier to get a picture than with more modern TVs. Next I will show you a small portable black and white TV that works perfectly with my old Pong system. This is a national branded TV TR525ES made in Japan in 1977. There are many other similar TVs and some also have radio and cassette tape recorders built in, but I looked for this exact model because I really like the simple and solid design. You can adjust everything manually and I like the greenish military look and I also like that it reminds a bit of an oscilloscope. It works with AC power, 12 volts or you can also put batteries in if you really want, so you could also use it in your car back in the days. It does not take much space and can be easily shipped when you buy such a device from eBay. You only have an antenna signal input and in most countries there are no analog TV broadcasts anymore, but if you want you could connect old home computers or even a DVD player for example when using an old VHS recorder as a converter, but why would you like to watch DVDs in black and white? But this TV is perfect for old Pong consoles and also helpful if you want to do quick tests with old home computers. By the way, there was a similar TV model available from the same company, also in military look, that was designed to fit into a Jeep. Very cool. I also bought the service manual for that TV as I like such things and I show it to you as you see a bit of the technology that's inside the TV. Today there are whole development departments only working on adapting the design of new products so that they will fail after approximately 4 to 5 years. There are certain tricks to do that like using low quality capacitors or reducing the cooling effect on certain integrated circuits so that they will fail over time. So when you pay for a new dishwasher, your new TV or your gaming console, you always pay also for an expert that makes sure you will get a product which will die sooner or later after the warranty period. This was not done like that back then when this TV came out. It was built to last and it was built in a way that you can even repair it. So this TV still works now after approximately 40 years 
and it still will work when your new Samsung or Sony TV is long gone and your Sony PS4 or X-Bone already exploded. Here we see now the badminton game on the screen, so it is just two blocks for player one and two and one dot for the ball. Basically all games for that system consist of three objects and the objects could be blocks or lines. I just wanted to show you that the system works and how gameplay looks like, even it is extremely hard to show a two player game without a second player, as the ball moves quite fast. I will not go into the details for the gameplay now, as I will focus on the games in the second video. At the end of this video I thought it might be interesting for you to see the PCB inside the main unit, so it is an old school single layer PCB with several discrete components and a few integrated circuits. As I said, there is no CPU and no dedicated Pong chip built in. Also the back side of the PCB is interesting to see and the way this was produced you don't see that often anymore in modern devices. There you also see how they did a coil directly on the PCB. Unfortunately I cannot explain more details now as this video is already quite long. Here we see now also what's inside the badminton game cartridge, so again it is just a PCB with a few discrete components and no ROM chip there. So I hope that was interesting and entertaining for you, stay tuned for part 2 where we will have a look at the games for the system. If you did like this video here, also check out the obscure game systems playlist on my YouTube channel. Please like, share and subscribe, say hello to us also on Facebook and feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.